Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial I will show you how do you validate a CSV file before importing into the database using SSIS. So recently I got a question from one of my subscriber Eric and he asked that I currently have a problem with SSIS and it is that I need before loading the data from a flat file into a SQL server table I must validate the fields that come in that flat file. Their names and they are in the correct order. So if there are the number of fields and in the correct order then load them and if one of the two previous conditions fails then record the error in a txt and stop the execution of the package. So he said that do you happen to have a video explaining how to fix this. So I thought to make a video on this one so let's jump to the demo. So in the d files location I got a file emp.csv. So if I open this particular file so it contains id, first name, last name and the date of joining. So it contains 1000 records and I will be importing this particular file into the SQL server table. So now in case if there are any new columns in this particular file or if the order of the column got changed or if the name of the column got changed or if a new column got added to the file then the SSIS package should fail and it should create a txt file and it should uh, write that issue that the column names are different or if the number of columns are different and the process should fail and if the number of columns are correct then the data should be loaded without any issue. So let's see how we can do that using SSIS. So this is my blank SSIS package and because we want to validate the columns in the txt file so to read the columns from the txt file we need to use the csharp.net. So we can write the code inside the script task in csharp.net and we can validate this particular thing. And because we want to load the files from the d files location so we can use a for each loop container so that it can get the file name from the d files location path okay so first of all let me just declare two variables here the first variable i will declare is the source folder okay and the data type will be a string for this one and the location will be d files okay and uh, let me create another variable file path here and the data type will be a string and i need to give an initial value to this particular variable so i can copy this particular path from here and i can paste it here so the variables have been created and i can close this one now i can just drag and drop the for each loop container into the control flow window and i can configure the for each loop container here from the collection i can select the for each loop file enumerator and then because we have a folder path so i can go to the expressions and from here i can select the directory and I can assign the value to the directory from the source folder and I can click on OK. Okay. I want to load the CSV file so I can write star.csv here and in the variable mapping I can select the file path SSIS variable. So when the for each loop container will run so it will get the path of the file and it will assign the value to the file path SSIS variable. Okay. Now the first task in the for each loop container will be a script task which will actually validate the file. So I can just drag and drop the script task into the for each loop container and then I can right click and configure the script task here. From the read only variable I need to select the file path SSIS variable from here and I can click on edit script so that it can open the script editor for me. Alright so the script editor window has been opened up and I have actually already written the code so I can simply copy the code from here and I can paste it inside the script task and I will explain you the code like what we are doing here and yeah it is missing one namespace for the system.io so I can click on show potential fixes and I can add using system.io okay so I think all the errors are gone and maybe I can just close this one so that we can have a closer look at the code so the code will start from the main method and the expected field name should be id, first name, last name and the date of joining. So they will be inserted into an array expected field names id, first name, last name, date of joining. So you can compare this one id, first name, last name, date of joining. So according to the column names from the CSV file you need to provide all the column names here okay in this particular line. And now what we are doing here uh, this is the SSIS variable file path. So we will get the value of the file path from the SSIS variable in this particular line okay. And then in this particular line we will get the all data from the file path okay and then i'm going to create two logs file here in the d files logs folder so if you open this particular folder d files logs so this is the folder so what i want is that in case if the file is wrong like in case if the number of columns are incorrect then it should create a txt file 
log column number wrong dot txt and in case if the order of the column is wrong or if the name of the column is wrong then it should create a file log underscore column underscore order underscore wrong dot txt and the file will be created at this particular location so i think it contains an extra column that i can remove so in case if your system uh, you want to create the log file at different location then you can pass the path here okay so what we are doing here that first we are checking if the file already exists then it will delete the file i mean this log file exists then it will delete the file similarly if the second log file will exist then it will delete the file so after the successful execution of the package these two files they should not be exist okay and in case if one of the file exists then it means that the process was failed okay so now what we are doing here we are checking that if the first line from the csv file means the header information if the header columns if they are not equal to the expected columns like these columns if the number of columns are not matching it means that the number of columns are different so what we will do we will write the information that the number of fields in the flat file does not match the expected number of fields so we will write this particular information into this file log column number wrong and we will write this information and then we will set the result to dts dot task result is equal to script result dot failure and it will fail the ssis package okay so if the number of columns won't match then it the package will fail and now what we are doing here that we are getting the header information from the csv file into an array field names and then we are running a loop and we are checking all the column names from the csv file one by one with the column names uh, those are listed here like id first name last name date of joining and if one of the column won't match then we will write the field name and or order in the flat file do not match the expected field names and order and then we will fill the ssis package again so the package will fail in two conditions if the number of columns are not matching and if the order or the name of the column is not matching and in case if both the conditions will be true then this particular code will run fine okay so i can click on file exit and i can click on okay so if the script task will run successfully it means that the file is valid and if the file will be valid then we will import the file into a sql server table so we can just drag and drop the data flow task into the forish loop container and i can connect the script task with the data flow task and now we can configure the data flow task our source is a csv file so we can just drag and drop the flat file source into the data flow task and i can right click and configure the data flow task here click new to create a new flat file connection manager and i can browse the csv file file type is csv so i will select csv file i can select the file click open if i click on preview so the data seems good here i can click on okay okay now we can just use the oldb destination to write the data to a sql server table so i can connect the flat file source with the oldb destination and i can configure the oldb destination here i need to click new to create a new oldb connection manager i can select the connection that already exist that will connect to the test database onto the sql server 2019 instance and i can click on okay from data access mode i will select table or we fast load and i will select the emp table that already exist and i will click on mappings to make sure that input columns have been mapped with the destination columns and i can click on okay so right now the flat file connection manager is hard coded and if you want to make the connection manager dynamic so you can right click on it go to the properties and from the expressions you need to select the connection string property and we need to assign the connection string property from the file path ssis variable now i can click on okay okay so our package is ready here and right now if you see in the d files location right now in the d files location we got a csv file emp.csv and in the logs folder we don't have any log here it means that the process has not ran so far okay and if i check the data in the uh, emp table so right now the table is empty as well okay so this is the file so let me execute the package and right now because the file is perfectly valid so it should import the data into the sql server table and no log file should be created so you can see that the process ran fine and it has inserted 1000 records from the csv file into a sql server table and you can verify the data here so this is working fine now let me truncate the table and uh, let me make some changes to the uh, txt file the source file so first of all let me add a new column so suppose if we added a new column dummy column so the process should fail and it should create a file that the number of columns are not matching something like this and okay and it should create a file at the d files logs folder 
so let me go back to the SSIS package and let me start running the package now so the process should fail at the script task so you can see that the process got failed at the script task and I can go back to the d files logs folder and you can see a file here log column number wrong okay and if you open this one so it is saying that the number of fields in the flat file does not match the expected number of fields okay so this is exactly the same issue that the number of columns are different okay so we got this thing now let me just remove this one and now let me do one thing that let me change the name of the field so in case of the id if i put suppose row id here so now the column name is different okay so this should also fail okay and now let me rerun this particular package so the earlier file that was generated that should be deleted and a new file should be created with a new error okay so now you can see that the column order wrong okay so it is saying the field names and or order in the flat file do not match the expected field names and order okay so you can clearly see that the field names are not matching or the order is not matching so you can clearly see that this is what we wanted from the SSIS package and I will share this particular code with you so that you can download it from the link in the description of the video and you can test it on your environment as well and maybe I can share the source file as well with you emp.csv so that you can maybe test this file itself okay so I think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on also that you will be notified every time I upload a new video thank you so much